Is the so-called black Hispanic Native American man a captive? Are they, are they held captive in America? Most people would say no, right? But when you was on a slave, when you was on a slave plantation, could you go freely wherever the hell you wanted to go? No, you had to have a permission slip. You had to have a pass, right? You know what they call it today? A passport. You can't leave this port without a pass. That's right. We don't know if we're going to keep the job that we work hard for. In South Carolina, it's an at-will state. They can fire you for no freaking reason at all. That's right. Give me Proverbs 31 and 5. This is the problem with our people. We don't even consider why this happens to us. God said this happened because you didn't keep his commandment. Hey, bro, right there with the red. Come here, come here. What's your name, bro? Hey, put that cigarette down. You don't need it. You're killing yourself. Good. What's your name, bro? Brian. Who? Brian. Brian? I'm Elisha. Nice to meet you. We out here teaching our people who they are according to God. What's, what's your nationality, bro? I'm Haitian and Jamaican. Mm. All right, so who's your father? What's your father? No, no, what's his nationality? What's your father? Your father is Haitian? So-called Haitian? All right, so according to God, the people that we know today as Haitians come from the tribe of Levi. That's right. So if Moses was walking the, the, the earth today, they would consider him a Haitian. Okay? Right. All right, so what does that mean for you that you're not Haitian and you're the children of Israel? You don't know, guess what? You're going to find out today. That's right. That's right. This means that you're far greater than any, any other thing that you can think of. You're far greater than every other nation in the world. Give me the script about what Israel means. Read. The book of Genesis chapter 32, verse 27. Come on. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. This is our forefather, Jacob, right? Jacob is the forefather of the children of Israel. All right, when you read the history and say he, he wrestled with an angel, he said, I'm going to keep doing this until you bless me, right? So this is the angel speaking to Jacob. He asked him what his name was. He said, my name is Jacob. Read. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. He but, said, no longer shall you be called Jacob, but what? But Israel. Why? Hold fast real quick, bro. What's your name? Read. For as a prince has thou power with God and with men. So now he's telling you, if you are the children of Israel, that means that you are a prince that has power with God. Right. Guess what that power, where that power lies? And you keeping the commandments. That's right. You know why? Because with you keeping the commandments, no longer are you gonna have to walk around like this, holes in your, in your clothes, bunny shoes or whatever. I'm not getting on your, on your gear, you know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is you ain't gonna have to live like that no more. In fact, Every nation that has something to do with the reason why you live like that is now going to be in subject to you. Bring it out. Give me that in Revelation 13. Did, did this happen to the so-called Haitians? Were the so-called Haitians put on slave ships, transported from different areas? You know anything about some of the Haitians? All right, I'll give you a small brief synopsis of some stuff that happened to the Haitians, right? So, before they were here, the so-called Haitians, so-called Jamaicans, and the so-called Black Americans, they, they labeled themselves under the name of Judah, all right? They were, were Jews when the king was split, all right? So they were living in the land uh, of Jerusalem. A siege came, they had to flee from Jerusalem and hide within Africa. Why? Because they they were dark-skinned people just like the Africans. So in them hiding, what happened was after the so-called white man then killed so many of these people here, they was like, dang, we still need some help. We can't do this. So what they did was they went and got the so-called Haitians from over here, transported them over here to what we know today as Haiti, in areas surrounding that. What is that called? That was called the slave trade. 
You understand? So the people of those islands, were they enslaved? Did, did they have freedom the whole time they was here? No, they was enslaved, they was in shackles, they was in chains. So did not, who did, who did that to them? That's my question. So-called white people, right? Guess what? God said there's a payback for what they did. It's not just gonna happen like that. If you're a prince that has power with God, you think God just gonna leave that alone? Just gonna let that happen and not do nothing for it? Read this. The book of Revelation chapter 13, verse 15. Man. Verse nine. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Every man have ears, right? So he said, what he's saying is, if you can understand what's going on, receive this, read. He that lead him into captivity. Check out some of these flies. Read, read, read. He that lead him into captivity shall go into captivity. He said, he that leadeth into captivity. The same people that did this to the children of Israel, right? Did not this happen to the so-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans? Were not they led in captivity, right? Right? So he said, those people that led into captivity, what's going to happen? They must go into captivity. So what does that mean? If he said, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, what does that mean? That means that those people are going to be captives themselves. Right. That's their payment. That's their judgment for doing it. Isaiah 14 and 1. No, no, finish that first. Read. He that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. Did not they take out, is it on here? I know it's on the flight. Did not they, what? Open up your flyer. You got a flyer? Open up your flyer. You got a flyer? Get a flyer. Open up the flyer. They, it, on the. Check this out. See what they doing here? See how they got these people yoked in chains? See this? How they got these people stacked up on the slave ships? You see this? This happened to our people. Guess what? When we was transported on them ships, did everybody make it from here to there? No, everybody didn't. You know why? Because a lot of them died on that ship. Some of them killed a dang on self because they said, I'd rather, rather die like this than to live like that. I'd rather kill myself than to live like that. Some of them, because they didn't want to be submissive, they threw, they put chains on you. Ain't never seen Amistad. You ever seen that movie before? See how a lot of them was thrown off the ship, killed. So those that kill us with the sword, those people that killed us, what must happen to them? They must be killed with the sword. God said they must die for killing us. God is going to do this. So now the question is, how do we get to that part? First Kings eight. How do we get to that part? Understanding, God, Moses said that the, these things will only happen to the children of Israel. Daniel, the prophet Daniel said that nowhere under the earth or other, under the heaven has this happened to any other nation. Right. You can't find this slavery on any other people. Nobody went through this. That's why the scriptures, Paul said, it's the spirit that bears witness with our spirit. The words in this Bible bears witness with us. We the only people that can relate to these words. Right. So how do we get from where we are now to being in rulership? Read. First Kings chapter eight, verse 47. Will you do? Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land where they were captive. Let me ask you a question. Are you captive here today in America? Is the so-called black Hispanic Native American man a captive? Are they, are they held captive in America? Most people would say no, right? But when you was on a slave, when you was on a slave plantation, could you go freely wherever the hell you wanted to go? No, you had to have a permission slip. You had to have a pass, right? You know what they call it today? A passport. You can't right. leave this port without a pass. That's right. Bring it out. Yes, you are captive today. Right. Yet, 
If they shall bethink themselves. If you shall remember that you are God's chosen people, you're not Haitian, but you are a Israelite from the tribe of Levi. That's right. You're not a black man in America, but you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Read. In the land where they were carried captive. Come on. And repent. And repent to turn away from your wicked ways, from your evil deeds, which what got us here in the first place. Read. And make supplications unto thee in the of, land. Read, read, read. In the land of them that carried them captive. Right here, wherever or wherever you've been carried captive, you make an earnest plea of begging to the most high God with all your heart, with all your soul. Read. Saying, we have sinned. Acknowledging what sin you were in. Guess what? As an Israelite man, you're supposed to grow a beard. You're not supposed to shave your head bald. You're not supposed to cut into your corners of your beard. You're supposed to put fringes on your garments. Today is the Sabbath day. You're supposed to congregate, not cook, not sell, not buy. You're supposed to do these things. If you are not doing those things, then you're in the midst of sin. Because sin is the breaking or the transgression of God's laws according to 1 John. That's right. So you admit what sin you're in, saying, Dear Lord, I did these things. I acknowledge that I committed this sin. That a sister should not be wearing pants. That's a sin according to God. Read. Saying we have sinned and have done perversely and we have committed wickedness. Say it to the Most High God that you committed this wickedness. Read, read, okay. read, read. And so return unto thee with all thy heart uh -huh. and with all thy soul Come on. in the land of thy enemies which led them away captive. Meaning what? You're renewing your mind. That's why I say with all your heart, with all your soul. You're understanding, yes, this is a fight, but I'm going to give my all to stay in it. Why? Because I want to be in rulership. I want to be a king. I'm tired of being a slave, and I want the people that did what they did to me to pay for it. Yes. Read. And pray unto, and pray towards their land. Right. Read. Which thou gavest unto their fathers. Which is the land Jerusalem. That's our motherland, our homeland. Right? So, now he's telling you how you're supposed to pray. Because we've been taught to just do this, put on your knees, go stand in the closet, go uh, at, the, at the foot of your bed. This is what we've been taught by our oppressors. Verse 22. Come on. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord uh -huh. in the presence of the congregation of Israel. Come on. And spread, and spread forth his hands towards heaven. So in praying, when you're praying towards your land, you're supposed to spread forth your hands to the, to the heaven like this, right? So this is part of how you pray. Not like this. Not on your knees in the corner somewhere doing something crazy. Go back to uh, where you was at. Pray towards their land, uh -huh. which thou gavest unto their father. Read. The city thou hast chosen. Come on. And the house which I have built Read. for thy name. Read. Then hear thy prayer and their supplications in heaven. That's when God is going to hear our prayer. When we pray that way and we repent of our sins, ask for forgiveness of our sins. Because we think we're praying to God now. A lot of our people think they're praying to God. But God said, I'm not listening to those sinners. That's in the Bible, John 9, 31. Read it for yourself. This is how God is going to hear your prayer. Keep reading on. Stay where you at, brother. Come on. Which I built in thy name. Come on. Then I shall hear thy prayer and supplications in heaven. That's when God is going to hear your prayer. Right. I get one more. Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy 30. Because remember, we're trying to turn this captivity. You, you love being a slave? You like it? So would you rather live a thousand years as a slave or would you, I'm sorry, would you rather die after a thousand years of slave or would you rather be a king and live forever, live as a king forever? Which would you choose? You want to live as a king forever. So guess what? It's stipulations to doing that. Right. That's what we're going over right now. Read. Verse one, start up right there. Deuteronomy 30 verse one. Come on. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee. Uh-huh. All these curses have came upon us, read. The blessings and the curse, uh -huh. which we I have set. The, we had the blessings under, under King Solomon, under King David. We had this all, all of these things. He said the blessings and the curse. Guess what? Now we're living the curses. So after all these things have happened, read. Which I have set before thee. Come on. And thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations. That's what we're doing today. We're calling this to mind 
before all the nations. We're um, making it known that the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the children of Israel. That's right. That we're in this captivity because we broke God's commitment. Right. The only way to get out of it is to do what? To repent and keep them. Read. Whether the Lord thy God has driven thee. Uh-huh. Read. And shall, and shall return unto the Lord thy God. That's repentance. Read. And shall obey his voice according to all that I command. Read. Thee this day, and thou shalt, and thy children with all thy heart. Come on. And with all thy soul. Come on. That then the Lord thy God will return thy captivity. Read that again, verse 3. Then, that then the Lord thy God will return thy captivity. and no, have read it right. Take your time, bro. Take your time. Come that on. then the Lord thy God will return thy captivity. If we come back to God's laws, he said, then he will turn our captivity. Right. Going right back to what we was reading back in Revelations. It's saying the same thing from the beginning to the end. What? He said, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. That's how they're going to go into captivity. Read so guess what? If they're in captivity, who's ruling? That's right. right. So in order for that to happen, what must you do? You got to repent. You got to keep God's commandments. What? That's right. Now, the choice is to you. What are you going to do? You're going to choose life? Are you gonna stay in sin and die? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.